Greetings, everyone. Happy holidays. Richard Copperthwaite here for Northwest Access TV. Happy to have our first uh, For the Record Swanton Today show in quite a while. It's been a longer gap than usual. Happy to have four guests. David Jeskavage, the Swanton Town Administrator. Neil Spear, the Swanton Village President. Reg Bellavo, the Swanton Village Manager. Elizabeth Nance, Swanton's Economic Development Coordinator. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, and again, you. for the record, we're taking this show on Wednesday, December 11th, in case any huge events happen in Swanton that we don't talk about that happened after, after we taped it. Uh, yeah, it's, been, it's been, been a while. Sounds like there's a lot going on in Swanton. Uh, Mr. President, let me start with you. We're at the end of the year. Hopefully we'll do another show in February before March town meeting. But Neil, looking back at 2019, what comes right to mind when you look at the year Swanton has had and just has a couple weeks left? Any particular highlights, lowlights, or whatever? Well, as last year at this time, we were looking forward to the new Ace Hardware store right. in downtown Swan. They've had a few glitches in that, but it's coming along very well now. Um, marble Mill project, improvements from Marble Mill, uh, the recreation area down there. Um, the, uh, the rec commission is working on teaming up with the, the teen center and uh, developing a community center. Uh, that's one of the things in the, in the works. Uh, we've had sidewalk, we're trying to get sidewalks going. Um, Including one to MVU ideally, right? Uh, one to MVU and there was one connecting downtown to the museum, the Ronald Kil Kilburn uh, Railroad Museum mm -hmm. on South River Street. And uh, that's in the works, so uh, a lot of things positive things going on. It sounds like it. David, looking back at the year for Swanton Town, what are some of the things that come to mind? Well, one of them was the um, Flags for Veterans project that the uh, select board finally decided to sponsor. Um, and we had a, uh, one uh, in um, Memorial, Memorial Day weekend and uh, another for uh, Veterans Day. And uh, the first one, uh, we had 52 um, flag sponsorships and uh, for the second one, 58 for a total of 110 at the end. Mm -hmm. And we hope that we keep repeating that every year. Uh, Neil just alluded to the Railroad Museum being named after Ron Kilburn. Yeah, that was nice, a nice, nice gesture uh, nice. for him for all the work that he put into that in the past. And we've had um, numerous uh, grants uh, awarded. Uh, Elizabeth will talk about a few of them that relate to the economic development. Yeah. And we had um, another uh, highway grant for uh, South River Street uh, that uh, was started this year. And uh, we received, uh, I think, around 147000 for that one uh, in grant money. And the total project was 179000 And that uh, includes uh, replacing uh, some of the culverts on that stretch of road, putting in guardrails, and uh, repaving uh, the surface. Uh, and the guardrails are needed because on the, uh, the riverside, it's a very uh, steep uh, drop and a quick one. There's not much of a shoulder there. So yeah. that will add a uh, safety factor uh, to the uh, uh, driving on that road. Should note a recent change in the select board. Lost one of your veteran uh, selectmen, Dan Billadu, by virtue of moving to uh, the town of Franklin. Yeah, he's he already stepped down from the board and did so. Right, he uh, already moved there, and we uh, were fortunate that uh, James Gilmet uh, stepped forward and uh, volunteered to uh, apply uh, for the vacancy. Who hadn't uh, served on the board previously? Yeah, for five years. So oh, he's wow. uh, well seasoned, and um, and at this time of year, with the budgets being reviewed, it was important to have somebody. Uh, with um, that type of experience to fill in uh, immediately. And that would be until next March. So if, if uh, he wants to continue after that, he would have to um, uh, sign up to run for the uh, election. For That's year. in March 2020? <coughs> yes. Okay. Did yeah. I see in the paper? I almost thought I saw that he was going to be serving till March 2021, which didn't sound right, but maybe I... No, I think maybe the I paper got it wrong. It. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. what I thought. So he's up... Yeah. So again, that term ends uh, this coming March. Has he indicated, has he given any indication whether uh, he'd like sure to stay on I longer? I haven't, I haven't checked the, um, 
the uh, sign-up sheets yet. So, so that term's know. up. There's another term, I well, assume, it, up it, also it, in March? Well, that term, uh, there would be uh, another term. Actually, that term would have gone for another, another, another year. year right. right, but because of the, the rules, uh, the gotcha. state rules. So uh, actually, it sounds like three seats will be up, two, two, two other ones, I would guess. Uh, for 20, it's the, either the, the one or two 20, others. One yep. or two others. Yep. And what about in the village, Neil? Uh, of course, you're... Are we, are we looking at a, yeah, a current I, and future president or yeah, thought, so about, I, uh, thought about another year? I have to rerun every year. <laughs> right. It's been a rerun for about 20 years now. <laughs> um, uh, uh, Adam, Adam Paxman. Adam's is term up, is up to. Yeah, this, this year. And uh, Diane Day is clerk. Okay. And uh, Betty Cheney is uh, tax collector. Tax collector. But that's, that's our slate. So have you made, uh, are we looking to see uh, Mr. Neil Spear on the ballot for another year as president if the voters so choose? Um, I think my petition is on the counter up at the, really? the village office, yes. Um. <laughs> so, and uh, yeah, there's quite a few things that have to be finished. Well, Reg, Reg has got a few. Uh, and um, we've worked on a, the, like the, the downtown. The original reason I got on the board uh, in 1999 was that the downtown was falling apart. Uh, the Blue and Store had sold and, and with, with Gordon and Debbie Winters uh, developing uh, the Ace Hardware, that's kind of what we expected to have 20 years ago and it, to see it to come to fruition, that's, that's, that's really rewarding. So that's just one of the downtown projects. Right. Um, Reg, let me go back. Halloween storm. I've never seen the Missisquoi raging so much. I might have missed. Uh, oh. No, you had some real serious flooding. How'd you fear with that Halloween night storm with just a ton of rain? I've never seen the river. I walked over the bridge at Highgate Falls there. I've never seen anything like it there. How'd you fear flooding wise with that? So, you, I, so yeah, looking at, so I've been the EMD for Swanton, the, the entire community for I think 25 years, yeah. and looking at the uh, the river flow data, the last time we saw something like this was 1996, and it was in January, really? and it was wow. 9.5 feet. This event yeah. was 9.49 feet. Is that right? Just that, about the same. It was, but wow. this was strictly water. Yeah. So if you take a look at the magnitude of that, had this have been in January and you had ice, yeah. this would have been probably as catastrophic, if not worse, That's than the couple, one we had uh, a couple in years 18. Ago. Yep. Wow. 18, it was 13.5 feet, I believe it was, for the wow. ice and so, the water. So again, no no flooding or nothing too we, major anyway? We had, well, the hydro, we had a, quite a bit of water there. Uh, the bag took a beating, actually, really? but, uh, the rubber bladder. But we didn't yeah. have any uh, major flooding in... Uh, along Route 78 like we normally did. Yeah. Uh, we had some, uh, it's in Highgate, but down on uh, Monument Road, there was a little bit oh. down on the end there again, I guess that same yeah. area of the river that's uh, been sloughing the roadside down. But, but nothing too bad. <clears throat> Boy, Eastern Franklin County should have been as lucky. It was, it was a battle to get to head east that day to Enosburg. It was had to uh, do a pretty circuitous route that day. Oh. Elizabeth? It was, the timing was actually kind of worked yeah. um, because we were getting ready to get the Marble Mill Master Plan and they had done oh. some preliminary work and that flooding kind of made us rethink some, oh, some really? options. So yeah. to make a positive out of a negative, it, it hmm. because of the tennis courts flooded, so we kind of really? rethinked some things based on that flooding. Wow. So. so it sounds like you're keeping busy, a lot of uh, initiatives going on, Elizabeth, well, for you? Well, they've talked about, we did, um, we applied for and got three grants for sidewalks, um, or so the MVU sidewalk design and construction, which we've been talking about as a community for, I don't know, 20 years. So we're excited to see that move forward. And, um, and again, is this a study? Is this the actual, no, this, this is, is actual design and construction. Uh, work. This no, is work. Um, yeah, so we got 632,000 from the state. Um, that's actually federal funds. So, and then we have to match that. It's 158,000. So, wow. but over four years. So it's, in, it's a four year project, but as we know, construction never goes to plan so we may have longer than the, than the four years and when when will that start will that start we next, are going next year to, yeah we're going to an rfp um in january or february so that will start this year yeah. um 
Then the town also applied for a feasibility study to look at putting some kind of path along McQualm Shore and Lake Street to tie the, that area into the downtown. Some safety issues with speeding and, and you know short shoulders. So we're looking, that's just a feasibility study to see what we can do, sidewalks, shared use path, whatever. Um, and then the village applied for a feasibility study to do the downtown, particularly with ACE coming in, how's that gonna you know, change traffic? And if anybody, you know, traveling through the downtown, it's kind of a weird, it's not safe for yeah. pedestrians or... Um, <clears throat> well, better than it was. It's, it is better than it was, but you know, what can we do to improve yeah. parking and access, um, particularly with the ACE, that traffic that they're gonna generate? So when when do when does Hordy Winters when is he hoping to uh, have Ace open at this point? Do you know they are stocking uh, mid January. Really? So um, yeah. sounds like there was a bit of a tougher project than Gordy Gordy thought, perhaps. Yes. I mean, I think yeah. I think his hope was to have opened what maybe this this past fall or this fall or something. Originally, he was hoping around uh, Halloween, I believe. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. But so he's getting get in there, huh? Yeah, and every day almost you see something. Yeah. It's changed. So we're looking forward to it. Yeah. Any other major developments downtown? That's certainly a biggie, Neil. Anything else of particular <clears throat> note downtown these days in it, terms of businesses? Uh, well, yes. Yes. Uh, or Elizabeth, anybody? Swant Swanton Rexall yeah. was bought oh, okay. by Notch. So uh, right. we basically lost the, the, the variety store, right. which Swanton... Rexall was a variety. They have yeah, it. Yeah, uh, good variety uh, store. We lost that, but uh, we gained the Notch Clinic. Uh, there's right. still some some uh, activity there, but uh, yeah. uh, as far as the other businesses on Merchants Row, I don't think yeah, anything is Everybody's holding is steady. Changed, yeah. But, uh, yeah. but again, the pharmacy, just to be clear, is the pharmacy gone or just a variety store kind of part of the pharmacy? Pharmacy is still there. Yeah. It's pharmacy just they remains. took out some of the, okay. the gifts. In that but just pretty thing. much just farm yeah. pharmacy stuff. And, well, the, and they did add, you know, like for crutches and, and those kind of, yeah. I don't know what the term is. <clears throat> <clears throat> Durable goods. The yeah, you know what home necess home yeah. needs. There's not a lot of places in Franklin County to get those, so that is something that we have added or the notch mm. added. So that's a definite yeah, there used positive. To be a place in St. Albans that would do that and. Uh, yeah, I, I think medical, I recall that. Yankee place. Medical was it or something like yeah, that? Yeah, something like that. The medical that. supplies. Yeah. Yeah. So they did add that. Yeah. Yeah. So, you're, so again, that's what really got you started. So, Neil, about 20 years in, in Swanton Village municipal government for you? Yes. With Mr. Kilburn, as I recall, jumping in for a... He gave me a break for... A break a for couple, a couple, couple years, years, maybe? I think. Yeah, yeah. It was a couple of oh, yeah. I appreciate that, too, so... <laughs> but you have a better... I mean, you feel Swanton's in much better shape now than back 20 years ago, would you say, or better shape? Uh, in better shape, uh, better attitude... Yeah. Uh, there's more enthusiasm. There's a lot, a lot of younger people have come into town yeah. uh, with uh, a lot of enthusiasm for, uh, like the schools and the library. They're, they're, they're a lot more active than they were. The, yeah. I mean, outside the school, like the playgrounds, yeah. and uh, uh, and the, I wish that we could get a little more activity downtown. But I'm hoping uh, the Ace Hardware will yeah. key, and we would like to do something. Yeah. Really nice with, uh, well, Gordon would like to do something really nice with the old theater building. They saved it, now we'd like to fill that with something. Mm. And there's a lot of ideas on that, but that's... Uh, the you get Marble Mill Park kind of right below there, if you can, yes. if you can inject some more life into uh, yeah. that, that great site, great site for a park, Elizabeth? One thing we haven't talked about is the playground at the, the elementary no, school. In fact, kudos to I guess, yeah. Debbie Winters and a lot of other folks for raising a ton of money, doing a great job with uh, with the new playground. Yeah, it looks great, and it gets a lot of use. So yeah, yeah a lot of use. Yeah. No, it sounds like there have been some good in initiatives. Um, David, as you mentioned, with the Swanton Enhancement Project and the and the visit, uh, something coming up related to that in a while. Uh, in okay. February, there's in February. going to be a celebration. Uh, Elizabeth uh, has more information oh. on that. It's to celebrate their um, uh, initiation of all these projects that are yeah. going on now with different uh, task forces. I was so, like, but, and anybody can jump in on any of this stuff. That was about four or five years ago? Exactly. five. It'll be five years it's in really January. So February 3rd, we're doing a community celebration. Huh. Um, VCRD, will, Vermont Council on Rural Development, will be back um, to help facilitate. So we're going to celebrate 
those things that we've done in five years because I think we forget what we've done and, and we've, we've done a lot. And then we're going to plan for the next five years. Yeah. Um, so bring the community together. There will be a catered dinner free for everybody. Where, and where is that going and to that be? Will be I want to make sure I get this right, at the Swanton, Ele the Swanton Central School, yeah. um, 5.30 to 8. Yeah. So we're just starting to get the word out. Um, so we're excited that it's been five years and to celebrate what we've done and look forward to what we can still do. And again, you feel there's still a pretty good amount of momentum coming out of that uh, almost five-year yes. yeah. ago visit. For sure. Yeah. Yep. There's still a number of task forces that are yeah. working on various issues. And the Swanton mm -hmm. Arts Council, as we all know, is mm. thriving. Yeah. So that's great to see. Well, Rent, I did catch. I'm going back a number of months, uh, maybe one of the last times I saw you. But the, the energy day in Swanton, whatever that was, that seemed... No, I had a good time up there with my buddy yeah. Alex, but how, how did that day go? It, throughout the week, uh, there were a couple of weeks when the Zem home was there, I mean, there was a lot of, a lot of foot traffic. They said that was, yeah. the, that was the busiest visit that they've had really? outside of even Rutland when they had it in uh, downtown Rutland. Really? So they were really impressed with, uh, with a lot of the publicity that Swanton did to uh, you know, to tout their public power and the, the Swanton utility, yeah. um, they're actually using a lot of what uh, we had done within uh, our community and uh, moving it towards the next community for the next round of uh, the Climate Economies Models Communities program. So, and again, you're talking about the <clears throat> the home that had. A Trying to think how to put it, you can. Put it was a zero better. zero energy mobile home. So zero we, energy. Yeah. So I mean, you can. Interesting. You should still connect to the grid because, huh. uh, I mean, the sun in Vermont doesn't really shine not, a whole not lot. Not always so. out there. Huh? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so that one had uh, uh, a clean air filtration system. It had a battery wall, yeah. uh, solar panels. Uh, it was highly efficient, and uh, you know that's we would encourage you know a lot of the older mobile home stock. Uh, you know, to try to consider these homes. Uh, the theory behind it is, is that uh, what you would save in uh, energy, uh, i.e. either being oil, natural gas, or electricity, you know, would help pay on the mortgage for the mobile home. Right. So nobody, no local folks <coughs> um, ended up buying it. it. It did leave Swanton after yeah. its week or whatever. Yeah, this is a, just a touring home. Okay. So uh, after, uh, I think they said after this year or next year, it'll be up for sale. But uh, there's uh, Vermont is the company that builds these in the state of Vermont. So it's a Vermont-grown company. Wow. Speaking of energy, as I'm thinking about it, Ormany Croft Generating Facility, are you, have, haven't you started work on re, a relicensing <coughs> Weird. application that seems to take, uh, take forever, it takes a lot of work, but that's underway? It takes five years. Five years, So wow. we submitted our, our uh, PAD, uh, preliminary application document, hmm. back, I think, last year. Uh, we've had some uh, state agency visits, uh, some interested parties, uh, you know, the, uh, the Rivers people, uh, uh, Northern Forest Canoe Trail. Hmm. Uh, there was a Missiscoy, the friends in the Missiscoy were there. Uh, so this is just meet and greet kind of thing. And, you know, if you have questions, bring it up here. Hmm. Uh, the state uh, wasn't able to attend. They had, it was one time they had to cancel. Another time it was the snowstorm that we had. Uh, they weren't there, but uh, we'll have some more of these uh, community uh, um, meetings and stuff to talk about the, the relicensing. Oh, but a five five year process. Five year huh? process sounds yeah. like a long time. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure I mentioned before I'm going back. Geez, how many thirty, forty years? But uh, again, the namesake of the plant, Mr. Roman Croft. I can recall when he was going through it way way back when. And got a call after, I guess, years saying, Richard, I got some news. We just got our, we were just relicensed. Uh, boy, it's quite, quite the process. Seems like it shouldn't take that long, but that's the way it is. Huh? It's, it's, and it's not a cheap, this no. costs you a few bucks, I can only assume. And that's the dilemma with the relicensing yeah. is that you can't ever, you don't know what the cost is going to be. Really? Because it depends on what the studies and you know, and what they're going to come up with that, you know, I want you to do an aesthetic study. Really? I want you to do a study on, uh, you know, the muscles. I want you to do a study on whatever. Huh. So, uh, yeah, so depending on what the studies are and what the requests are, uh, whether they uh, uh, make sense or not, I mean, you never know what the, you know, what the price tag is going to be. There's another utility, uh, 
you know, a little south of uh, Central from us, uh, they're, I think they're getting close to a million dollars and they still haven't really? got their license yet. Wow. They had that, uh, I believe it was in the paper on their water qualities, uh, was approved by, uh, what, by uh, the courts and then the Supreme Court overturned it really? and favored the uh, agency, <clears throat> the Natural Resources Department of Environmental Conservation. Yeah. So uh, they're going to go back in and I believe they're going to litigate it some more. So. Wow. <clears throat> so I guess it should be noted, I mean, there's no absolute guarantee you get relicensed, although I suspect in your no. case, I would guess you're in pretty good shape, but no no guarantee about that, huh? Correct. And, and, Correct. And, and probably more to the point, you just don't know how much it's going to end up costing you. Right. I mean, one of the things that we try to do, I mean, I try to do the most and the trustees encourage that, is to, you know, have a, an open door policy with these state agencies that any time you want to come in and visit, I mean, feel free to come in. And they've, in the past year or two, they've been in a couple of times. Uh, you know, every year FERC has to come in and do, a, a, right. you know, a dam inspection. And, uh, I mean, there's a lot of paperwork associated with that process, too. Uh, but yeah. that's every year. Is the state pretty much a bystander with this as opposed <clears> to the, the feds or not really a bystander? Or? It's the way the license is written. Yeah. I mean, you can have a license, and I can't, I don't remember the term, but theoretically that once you get your license approved, uh, other agencies really have no claim to, uh, you know, to bring anything else up unless, you know, something catastrophic is happening, I believe. But once the license is issued, uh, there's no other action that can be taken from state agencies. Yeah, so. Boy, it sounds like quite the process. Yeah. David, how long have you been on board as Swanton Town Administrator? Uh, since April um, of uh, 2012, really? so it'll be eight years uh, this coming April, wow. April 2nd. And of course, uh, had the same position in Highgate before that, or same right. title anyway. Yeah, for four years there. Boy, so as, um, as your job, I probably asked you this before, but in those eight years, do, do things get more complicated? Is it, uh, you feel, is it a tougher job or more involved job now than it was when you started in Swanton? Or? Uh, it's a little more involved, but yeah. um, I enjoy it, and um, it's, uh, the variety is very appealing. Every day is different. I suspect, no, every day is different, I'm right. sure. Yeah, so. Uh, and some days probably uh, maybe last a little longer than you'd like, but anyway, but every day is different. Yeah. Yeah, and, and uh, working with the select board is uh, uh, enjoyable also. And yeah. they've had a, a program going on for the past several years for capital improvements of uh, town buildings and infrastructure. So uh, several years ago, the, the uh, new town garage was built. Right. Uh, two years ago, uh, we had the um, roof uh, rehabbed on the town office building and also the, um, the bricks on the building. Uh, were cleaned and um, treated uh, to preserve them longer. And then we had the um, uh, cover placed over the uh, handicap ramp. And this year um, they funded um, a new roof for the, or I should say new shingles for the um, uh, railroad depot. And mm -hmm. so they have an active program keeping um, uh, things up, up, upgraded uh, so they don't deteriorate over time. Speaking of the new town garage, are you still trying to sell the, the old town garage site? Is that still for sale? Correct. That's up, and we have some <laughs> people interested in, in it now. They're exploring the possibility. So, so are you um, surprised that's taken so long? Would you have thought that would have sold more easily or quickly? Uh, well, it, it has a triangular shape, and that makes it a little more difficult. Yeah. It does have some good points with... Uh, uh, municipal water and sewer from the village. Right next to the school, of course. Yeah, three phase <clears throat> power and uh, uh, Vermont gas lines are right there. So, the, and it's yeah. right next to the rec trail. So, right. a lot of amenities, but uh, right. there is a small patch of um, uh, pollution on the property from the days when the highway garage was there, right. and uh, it, yeah. it's not it, uh, significant. It's very tiny area that could be uh, addressed simply by paving over it. Uh, the concern is having dust blow around. Yeah. Um, but sometimes when people hear that, then that kind of um, closes a door on their interest. interesting. But um, uh, anyone who's familiar with how, how you would deal with that would, I think, would be, um, you know, able to um, take that property and uh, develop it nicely. So you're thinking residential, likely the likeliest? Uh, probably most likely probably. residential in that area. Yeah. yeah. 
Rent, I know a topic he loved me asking about the wastewater facility and the and the phosphorus issue. Seems like when I last left, <clears throat> you find folks the state was after not just you guys, but after what municipalities in general to reduce the phosphorus coming out of wastewater plants. So and I know you said quite a while ago that that was that was going to be tough. It's still going to be tough. Well, yeah. uh, we found that uh, chemically treating uh, the water, the wastewater. So. Uh, chemically meaning that we put in a flocculant that takes a lot of the solids out of it and the phosphorus adheres to the solids. Mm -hmm. So we add more of that, but all that adds to is extra landfill, or not landfill, but our land app property up on Woods Hill. Mm -hmm. So uh, so we can, we can achieve the targets that they want to have us achieve for our phosphorus, but it's unsustainable with the amount of... Uh, flock that we got to put in the water really? for the, the effluent. But, uh, you know, with the new mandates, uh, you know, the state has these PFAS mandates of parts per trillion. Uh, so they did some testing of the land and the, the wells around our uh, land app area and everybody passed <coughs> there. Now they're doing uh, lead testing in really? the schools. I mean, they had it in the paper. Uh, they had it in the news, Channel 3. Uh, but... Uh, uh, so, I mean, the parts per trillion, again, are very difficult to achieve anything. I mean, you can find anything at a parts per trillion, yeah. you know, when you're looking at water. But, you know, a lot of these mandates, you know, whether it's, you know, health reasons or whatever reasons, I'm uh, not sure how we're going to achieve them. I mean, the new stormwater rules that are coming out, yeah, wow. you know, for property that are three acres or more of impervious surface. This is the, the MS, <clears throat> MS4, is that what that's? Uh, I'm trying to think of the... MS something? Uh, yeah. But, you know, so like the village complex is a pr piece of property that we're going to have to figure out when, you know, when it comes time. Yeah. But if you can't mitigate your stormwater on your property, it's uh, $25,000, I believe, per acre. Really? And uh, so it's like, so we give you that money, but it doesn't go to the property. It goes to other projects. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, why, how does that fix our issue that they're claiming we have for stormwater runoff on that impervious surface? So, I think as a St. Albans City resident, which I've been for quite a while, I think I get now a surcharge on my quarterly water sewer bill that hooks into the run runoff issue. Really? I think 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 so for the last couple times, I think. Hmm, there's an idea. Anyway, sounds like a, there you go, in case you're looking for some more more. But, you know, you talk about the EB-5, follow the money. Try to follow that money and see where that goes. Right. You know? Wow. Um, you can get my blood pressure up. Yeah. <laughs> Neil, I usually ask you, any, anybody in state government or elsewhere, or I think of uh, one of the Lake Champlain groups, anybody after removing what the Lower Village Dam, have I got the right name for that, or is that uh, <coughs> nobody after that? Is, have they backed off that, whoever? I had to ask that. Had to ask that. <laughs> and I know you were looking yeah. at some potential uh, hydro generation out of that. Is that still under study? or that's That's been pretty quiet. For the last, so uh, yeah, um, so oh, the, Reggie's gonna, yeah, so the different. gentleman that was in charge of that uh, became very, uh, let's say, critically ill. Uh, so oh, really? he basically had to back off from the project. So huh. right now we're we're in limbo uh, from the hydro property from, from, from the hydro no, from the mm -hmm. uh, low yes. So uh, Bill Scully was the engineer that we hired to mm -hmm. to analyze that area to see what was possible. We had some good communications with state agencies, but. Uh, became very ill, so he's not uh, going to be able to follow up with it. So, so we'll you might to... you might find somebody else to keep looking at that, or <clears throat> right now everybody's quiet. So yeah, right. yeah uh, probably. But again, nobody is there. Nobody making any noise about uh, how how you folks should remove the dam. No, no, not just me. I'm the only person but who brings up that. They're out there. They're, they're out there. Yeah. So. But, uh, and I know it came up to uh, what the, the vote at a town meeting several years ago with a very strong support of Swantonians do to keep the keep the dam obviously. Yep. So, so uh, I'll have that paperwork. Quiet for now, anyways. Yeah. You never know. <laughs> Elizabeth, the uh, grant money you go for is that some bo both state and federal? Are you going after anything you can you know whatever makes sense or? We um, we will anything that makes sense. And is um, it both state and federal? Are there funds out there on there both? Are, there are. In, so I also work one day a week for Franklin County Industrial Development right, Corporation. Right, Mr. Tim Smith. Yeah. Yes, and one of the things that I do is keep a kind of a spreadsheet of any and all grants that I find. And if I know somebody's looking for one, the library or whatever, I send it off to them in particular. Yeah. I mean, there is money out there. 
it's just a matter of, of knowing about it. And then, of course, you have to be one of the billion of people applying for it yeah. to get it. Um, but it's... Right now, um, we're in fact, we're working on a couple of, we're, just, we're finishing a grant for the safe routes to parks um, that <clears throat> we're looking to get funding to put a, what's that called? The there, flashing yeah, beacon the light. The yeah. rapid, uh, yeah, rapid something, those flashing, flashing crosswalks. crosswalks oh, yeah. at, the, uh, at Marble mm -hmm. Mill um, to ease um, access there. Mm -hmm. We're beginning a, a grant um, to, since the feasibility study for Marble Mill is done, so now we're looking at a grant to actually do some implementation. Um, that's due late February, I believe. Um, and can you talk? Can you talk more specifically about Marble Mill? What, what, what are you looking at there, or is that? It, it's largely to be to keep its kind of rural, rustic nature. You know, we're talking about putting a, some walking paths in to make it you know easier for people with mobility issues um, because right now it's it's grass mainly a um, couple of overlooks so you can access the um, the boat there is a boat access there to make that easier um, redoing the tennis courts to incorporate pickleball um, and you know they they did not survive the flooding really? um, very well no. two years ago so maybe mm. spruce those up and we're looking at act, adding an active play area that is kind of very it won't look like the gym at the school it will mm. kind of go into the atmosphere down there. Natural setting, yeah. Yeah, the natural setting. And then one of the big things that we're looking at is how to incorporate the bank um, from where the Ace Hardware is to go down to open, ac to open access. One idea is to put a slide down there um, and maybe some steps. So it, it, <coughs> people thought that was a great idea just so you could slide right down, but just those kinds of things. Is there a boat access there now? I can't. It, is it, is, well, it's a canoe access, so light boats. Canoe access. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. Very informal. Are you, yeah, are, you very. Looking, are you looking for a more, I mean, a That's bigger boat access or not? Not, not much bigger, yeah. just to open it up so people okay. have access, easier access to it. Because um, there is a boat access on the other side oh, of the yes. river, yeah. correct? Yeah. 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 Um, you know, clean up the, so you can have um, picnics, you know, grill out there. Um, we did talk about campsites. I think we kind of decided not to do no, campsites, really. but yeah. people overnight is probably not the best idea down there. Yeah. Um, I mean, part of the, you know, the, uh, I think the uh, uh, stigma of the place is that it's secluded. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not well maintained. It is mowed, you know, after the flooding, okay, the tennis courts, they were damaged, the fence was damaged, and I mean, we just, to put the, the, the hours into fixing it up, this is where we came up and I, you know, talked to Debbie and uh, Betsy to say, you know, I need some help here. If mm -hmm. we're gonna revitalize this thing, we gotta do it right, uh, I need some help. So they stepped in and they're wonderful. Uh, and uh, I think it's the stigma, we gotta get rid of that. Uh, and to do that, we gotta reimagine it. But, you know, I've got to tell, too, with the town still focusing on the community and economic development position, there's no way that all of these grants could be achieved by the time that I have mm -hmm. to look for grants. And I don't know about David's time, but to have a person that's focused on that and looking for those opportunities, and I'm going to take her off my calendar because she keeps adding stuff to it. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's the overall community aspect, you know, and I think that, uh, you know, the, the visit helped. Uh, you know, the SEP helps, all these committees, activities help, but when you are a business person or a family that want to move into a community, when you know somebody is focused specifically on economic development and growth and uh, the well-being of the community, I think it's a big deal. Mm -hmm. And it makes people want to come in and, and uh, live here. Awesome. David, I see, um, maybe I'm dreaming, but uh, the subject I bring up every every once in a while, the causeway, I mean, the old causeway out at the Missisquoi Bay Bridge. Did that, I see a story on that a while ago. Of course, that was even yeah. got the attention of the International Joint Commission. Going back years, there were some folks who really wanted that old causeway, you know, taken taken out of there in the hopes that it would get better with what flow into Missisquoi Bay. Mm. Maybe I'm dreaming oh. nothing. That's come no, across I mean, your desk on that. No, I Any, anybody else here? Recently. No. Yeah. I do know that um, know. a friend of mine went yeah. kayaking up in that area. <clears throat> yeah. And um, uh, he said it was so full of seaweed there, you couldn't even paddle. Really? In that area. Yeah. yeah. 
Of course, they've got the boat access right by the bridge by the Larry, Larry Green boat access. Right. Yeah. Yeah, huh. yeah and uh, as far as grants go, we also, uh, both the village and the town, are eligible for uh, FEMA uh, grants whenever there's a storm event that meets certain criteria that they have. Yeah. Um, I don't know who does it at the village, but on the town, I, Kathy and I um, uh, put together the information that they need to yeah. get reimbursement for cleanup costs yeah. on... Um, uh, either road damage or, or limbs and trees coming down, that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we get uh, some help from them on that. Yeah. See, we would do it for our utilities and stuff. So, yeah. I mean, the last uh, October storm a couple of years ago, we had some infrastructure damage and stuff, and we did receive some mitigation grants for uh, an air switch up, at, uh, up near our hydro facility so we wouldn't lose electricity. So if we do get a major uh, outage on our transmission line, we can flip this switch and backfeed ourselves so the, the uh, outage is less, uh, uh, less in time. So, mm. Franklin County State Airport in Highgate getting some attention, <coughs> looking to, I guess, expand the runway. And again, you folks, village figures in. So looking to extend a water sewer line out there or thinking about that, or what's the status on that? We had, well, you were at the meeting too, but uh, we had a meeting... Uh, was another follow-up meeting about the, uh, this one had to do with uh, basically the questionnaires for everybody who lived in the area and the businesses up along the airport road to mm. see, you know, uh, you know, what's their status now on water? What's their status on sewer? Would they, you know, would they want to connect to the, the village system? Um, and uh, basically it's, you know, then from there, it's what's the cost associated with that? Mm. Uh, so it's still, uh, preliminary studies, it's feasibility, right. what does it look like? Uh, it, you know, for the most part, we can probably pretty much, unless it's, unless it's done with a private uh, public partnership, uh, there's no way that uh, the village could fund it, you yeah. know, just through our ratepayers. So that's what Highgate is looking for. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of like the supplier for the water. So we're, right. we're co-sponsoring it, but we're in the wings working with them to help them to, uh, you know, get the grants and, uh, you know, uh, the studies done. Capacity-wise, you okay? I mean, I mean yep, water, capacity. sewer, no yep. problem capacity-wise? Yeah, that was part of the study, and yes, yeah. you should be fine. Elizabeth, are you <clears> dealing <throat> with that? Are you dealing with the, tell me, tell me, again, they're looking to expand the run, run, well, lengthen the runway? They are, what is it, 4,001 feet? Yep. So it would take, like, not jumbo jets or anything, but... But it, still, like, FedEx planes, FedEx, is that what I'm UPS hearing? FedEx, yeah. are, are a possibility. Huh. Um, what was interesting, kind of from both stand, from the town and from the, the county aspect, was they did a small market analysis um, based on what would make sense to come into that area. You wouldn't put it retail at um, the airport, but manufacturing, industrial warehousing, those mm. kinds of things. So we have some data that we didn't have to tell us what makes sense to go there, where the opportunities are, so that way when we move forward, we can you know, solicit businesses to go into the area. So um, do you see some real you know, future changes out there, some real development out there? There is, and you know, what's interesting is we're, you know, a lot of Canadian companies are looking across the border hmm. and you know, making rela getting relationships with those companies you know, we've had a, a number of, of Canadian companies look at Swanton um, in particular. And so, you know, Highgate, Swanton, you don't want to necessarily poach one from the other, but what's mm. good for the county is good for everybody. Yeah. So, and, and it makes, where it makes sense to put them. Um, the, you know, the, the study mm. they did, the, uh, what the heck is it called? The, econ the um, anyway, they didn't, uh, the, the study for the feasibility for the economics. You know what I'm trying to the say? The market study. Yeah, thank you. That market study. They did it so it would bleed over, so it wasn't just for Highgate, it was for the Swanton area yeah. too. So it was like the area, what does it look like? So because of the proximity of the airport to Swanton, I mean, obviously you would have bleed over into our yeah. area as well. So that was important in that study and uh, good information to know yeah. too. And there might be some Canadian companies <clears throat> for, for which the, the airport would be a key. I mean, you yeah. might get some folks... Uh, interested in locating there just so if they could fly in there. Yeah. We may have to change the name to that place, Franklin County International, International State <laughs> Airport, maybe. <laughs> Every other airport seems to always throw on inter International. Yeah. That might be pretty legit. Yeah, that's a special de designation. Yeah. I believe it has to come through Congress. 
Oh, is that right? Yeah. Interesting. Of course, the airport is just just barely in Highgate. I mean, MVU is part part Highgate, correct? The MVU property. Yeah. yeah. But it's just bare. But in, but all the airport is High Highgate, I guess. The, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Well, and it's nice we have a good relationship with Highgate, so yeah. to be able to work together on the project is helpful. Swanton Village Police Department seems like I did read a story about what some what BB BB gun vandalism a while ago, but yes. it has. How, looking back at 2019, you know, Swanton Village PD was it uh, again pretty? How, how would you uh, talk about the year crime crime wise? Is it really kind of typical typical year with what goes on, or any many characterizations come to mind? I don't know if you could call any year a typical. Yeah, year maybe not typical. I know department. I know speeding but, seems like it's all, always an issue. Uh, yeah, yeah, in every community, um, yeah. the the speeding issue is, I guess, fairly under control. Uh, I haven't heard as many complaints lately. Yeah, of course, winter winter maybe helps with that a bit. The anyway. season, yeah, the weather. Uh, the the, uh, the drug situation has improved. It's, uh, yeah. There's a lot less violations. that uh, yeah. We've had some domestic violence issues. There. We had, like last week, we had a, a break-in and uh, yeah. a couple of teenagers broke into a place. And, yeah. uh, but uh, the PD has... They're they're ready to make some arrests on the BB gun, the BB yeah. damage. Yeah. Uh, so that they found the uh, the culprits on that, plus uh, the uh, the ones the the breaking and entering there, uh, the domestic. They know who that is, and um, they're they're they seem to be right on. And the uh, the new canine has mm -hmm. come of age, and he's. Uh, He's been working with uh, Scout. Uh, he's been working with uh, the drug enforcement, and he's made a couple of uh, fines. And he's mm. uh, he's re he's certified for uh, search uh, hunt, huh? Search and rescue. Too. Search, yeah, he's oh, really? certified for search and rescue now. So mm. uh, that's that's working out he real helped, fine. Uh, so. He helped the border patrol with a big. Uh, with a big find too, yep. so yep. there oh, yeah. may be some uh, financial bleed over from that uh, from that arrest uh, too. Yeah, we've had uh, continued uh, vandalism on the wreck path. Uh, yeah, it just doesn't stop, and we had yeah. some of it recorded uh, on surveillance cameras at the railroad museum. Uh, really? But it was at night, three thirty in the morning. Seems like right. Isn't the uh, police department? Aren't they? Don't they even log some time on the wreck path? or doing some patrolling on there once in a while. They do. Now yeah. And then I think they have a bicycle. No, it's not in about a week ago myself. But uh, it sounds like that's been. Yeah. It's unfortunate because a lot of the um, interpretive signs <clears throat> that were yeah. on there yeah. were torn down and thrown in the woods, and then our. Um, yeah. Um, maintenance person from the highway who mows along the edges uh, finds them in the fall yeah. and retrieves them. But uh, they're all in my office now because as fast as uh, just not worth putting them up they, again every, and, uh, every time. We nice. even tried uh, bolting it down more securely. But what happened then? They're made of kind of a plaster, hard plaster. Yeah. And uh, instead of just popping them off and throwing them, they stuck a yeah. screwdriver underneath and cracked them open, apart to yeah, get them off. Yeah. Of course, we're talking about the Richard Dick Thompson Fit and Healthy Recreation Path, right. which, of course, will be the western terminus of the Lamoille Valley Rail Trail, mm -hmm. on which work is being done kind of uh, here and there anyway. Do you, get, do you get any information on that? I think there was supposed to have been some work done in Franklin County maybe this last yeah, summer. No, but Not recently, but uh, yeah. a couple of years ago, I did get a request for a support letter yeah. uh, for a grant that VAST was applying for to help rehab. Yeah. The first eleven and a half miles. Uh, so, in, in that regard, the town yeah. helps out on that. They are doing a huge yeah. fundraising push. And yeah. There is, and I don't have as much information I should, but I know yeah. that there is an individual who is offered to match oh, up really? to. Don't hold me to it, but it's like forty thousand dollars. It's a huge number for really? an individual trying hmm. to get this moving. It's been long enough and, and to show that you know, there's a lot of local interest to get the state to buy back into it yeah. um, because it would be nice to get it yeah. extended. And I would add for what it's worth, we just celebrated the 10th anniversary of the Richard oh, really? Dick Thompson. Yeah, no, that's great. It was this summer. Yeah, think, that's great. I it's, think with the widening yeah. of, uh, of uh, North River uh, by the town this past summer and yeah. then if we get that you know, the South River. South River, thank you. 
we get the tra uh, north south I'm directionally challenged but uh, you know you get more make it safer to get there so you, you may know, be so able to get, get a sidewalk is that that's uh, at least well, a possibility well, wider we tried. shoulder a yeah, wide, just wider shoulder. Just a wider yeah, shoulder. Well, not a strike. You can't do a. Well, side. we could, but there was a tremendous amount of opposition okay. for the people that. I think I might. There. I think I might know one of those opponents, possibly. But yeah. anyway, but a wider shoulder, anyway, is being right. uh, considered. Yeah. It's already yeah. done. Because it's, it's already, already done. done. Okay, yeah. that's good. Yeah, and the, ta the town has already started that. Oh, okay. Yeah. They have the base, and it's going to be paved in the spring. Okay. I assume. Uh, yeah. We'll yeah. move some power poles back. Uh, oh, is further. That Towards the river, yeah. so you can have a wider lane. It's pretty dangerous because yeah. the, the, yeah. the traffic clips right along from the museum towards yeah. the village. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the, there's in the summer or when the weather is fair, there's a lot of families that that uh, with baby carriages, bicycles mm. that use that that mm. section of to connect to the rail trail. So. Yeah. Uh, it, and the overgrowth has come from the riverbank <coughs> in the past. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, with the curve in the middle, it's it's not not too safe for anybody to be walking down that street. Right. Which it, it's vast vastly improved now that the shoulder is widened. That's good. So. Of course, yeah. that's terrain you know pretty well, Neil. Obviously. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and the areas that were uh, presenting water problems are the ones that are, are being addressed with the culverts, uh, new culverts that were yeah. put in. And uh, several years ago, we also had uh, uh, Cross Engineering do um, a geologic uh, analysis of the, the soil under the road, and, mm -hmm. and they found, they did borings and so forth, and found that, uh, that all the soil along that stretch is pretty stable. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's not much of a, a risk of um, sliding into the river yeah. there. And we had a new culvert uh, put in uh, two years ago, the box culvert. Um, uh, to address uh, the old stone line culvert, which was collapsing on itself. Uh, speaking of the police department, uh, David, of course, uh, Swanton Village PD is still patrolling, covering Swanton Town. Right. Uh, and the town is uh, still at least reasonably happy with that coverage from. Right. PD. It goes from um, March, uh, or April 1st, I should say, to March 31st every year. Oh, yeah. And uh, so Joey's coming into our meeting next Tuesday to present his uh, new proposal for the following year. Chief Leonard yeah. Joey still? Oh, yes, yeah. Boy, he's, he's been in that job for a while. Oh, yeah. yeah. And the, the PD pretty pretty stable in terms of employment with the PD? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, at this point, I mean, we got, uh, we got some new part-timers coming in. Uh, great people. Uh, there's one in particular there. He borrowed the village car, and I happened to have lights on it, so he uh, he was able to utilize that quite well the other day. So, uh, but yeah, they're a good group of folks. They uh, well versed in their job, and they get along well, and it's really yeah. it's it's a pleasure. And state police presumably give you some some attention in the hours when Swanton Village PD, or at least if, if need be, they would jump into the fray. Right, they provide backup. Back yeah. Border yeah. patrol. Border yeah. patrol. N not yeah. to mention border patrol. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Border patrol is within minutes. Right, and they and they do they certainly do get involved once in a while if need oh, be. Yeah. I guess some. Huh? Yeah, we'd love to have them. Yeah, yeah, and, and vice versa. Also, the Swanton police yeah. help them out. Yeah, Neil, were you gonna? Yeah, one thing I want to mention just came to mind uh, January 28th we're having an anniversary of yeah. the Merchants Row fire uh, Boy, who could, who could 50, forget? 50 years wow. ago that's a good point I should have been thinking of that and, I think I've uh, still got Nat Warman's uh, book or booklet on, yeah, on that yeah. I think 1970 <coughs> and we're having a get-together at the oh. at the complex it's yes Is it? complex um, we're looking at 630 or 7 that that's Still wow. to be determined, but and it is on the actual 50th anniversary date. Yeah. Is that right? Mm. Yeah. January, January 28, 1970 was it? Yes. Wow. Yeah. Before my time, but I certainly like you know, read and heard about that a, a lot of time. What an incredible event for Swanton. Yeah, it was. So from which uh, the you know Swanton seemed to come back pretty pretty well, but that was some some fire. So. No, yeah. No. Thanks for mentioning that. Yeah, that was a a big year. The downtown Swanton burned and that MVU was built. Yeah, boy, that's right, MVU's opened, so first year too. There was too. a lot of construction going on that, the, that couple of years there. And speaking of, speaking of that, I think I've seen some references. I think there was a group uh, looking to certainly take note of MVU's 50th anniversary, I guess. Yeah. 
It seems like I've seen a, a story or two about that also. Uh -huh. Too bad they didn't do the, the sidewalk from MBU to the village. I'm probably yeah. not the first person to mention that, huh? Yeah, that'd have been nice. 50 years ago, but it didn't, didn't happen. But, but that's great. So the sidewalk uh, looks like that's really moving along here. Yes, it's... Important. Were you surprised, you guys? It sounds like you got some, a lot of grant money. Was that a surprise, or did you think you had a pretty good well, shot at that? So we applied for three, and, and I was comfortable in what we submitted. Yeah. Um, and we asked beforehand the... the um, the guy from the state, I said, are, you know, are we competing against ourselves? And he said, no, they look at them all each individually. Mm -hmm. And I took him at his word, but I was like, you can't tell me that in the back of their mind, they're going, okay, we gave them one. Are we going to give them this one? Are we going to give them? But they did. Mm -hmm. What we didn't consider, I think, is all the work that, that now has to go on to administer, uh, you know, in, in those three grants, you know, because they're all happening at the same time. So, it's a lot of work. Um, we're lucky to have a great partner with um, Northwest Regional Planning Commission. Right. Um, Bethany is going to oversee um, probably two of them um, with some backup from, from David and I in the state. So we're fortunate to have a great partner there. But it, they're, mm -hmm. they're worthwhile projects. And if, if we'd have gotten MBU, I would have been happy to be, get all three of them. Um, mm -hmm. I think we're pretty proud of, of that and looking forward to implementing the, the other two once we're done with MBU. Okay. Yeah. Well, boy, the, the year 2020 is not far away, obviously. Again, taping the show on December 11th. Neil, any, uh, when, you, when you look in your crystal ball uh, uh, for 2020 for Swanton Village, uh, any one or two things you'd really like to see uh, progress on or moving uh, on? or Honestly, I, I'd like to see the downtown revitalized, yeah. which I've wanted that for 20 years. Then the hardware with, with, storage with should Gordon, certainly help that. With Gordon and his, his troop in there and mm. the, the ladies uh, pushing for the marble mill, uh, yeah. that all ties together. And, and the winners is they're willing to, to work with the community to access marble mill from the back of the new oh, Ace great. Hardware. Which, uh, and the old building, there's a couple of old buildings uh, that <clears throat> I'd like to see revitalized. It is actually, it's in the process, but you don't know about it yet. <laughs> um, and uh, it's just uh, a lot of, hopefully every, hopefully the, the community will come together like they have in the, the past five years or so yeah. and, uh, and get involved because uh, that's, uh, that's a real, uh, discouragement for some some of the community leaders like ourselves yeah. uh, that uh, we we get some ideas and want some help or some advice some input and uh, the people don't show up uh, a lot but uh, they're, they're they're getting better at that. I think so. yeah. local businesses in that area too have stepped up I mean you got scampers is still going strong yeah. uh, uh, the Swanton House of Pizza, but is it still, is it Pam's? It's, yeah, it's still Tim's, and they place, they yeah. have done a lot of um, rehabilitation inside. It looks fabulous in there. They've done a lot of effort, a lot of work yep. uh, mm -hmm. to improve. Uh, I mean, and the, the village has put lighting underneath the uh, <coughs> soffits, so that brightens the downtown oh, right. up quite a bit. That's yeah. what we've been working yeah. on that for yeah. years. So. You know, the Karen's Hair Studio has been in there now and mm -hmm. doing well yeah. uh, with uh, Notch going in. I'm hoping that, you know, they can fill the rest of the space, you know, with other uh, medical goods in there. But uh, I think the, the existing merchants are doing a nice job in the downtown. Um, uh, geez, I'm drawing so a new, blank. New, it's a new restaurant. I know some folks would love to see another restaurant. Any, any talk about anybody uh, else coming yeah. into town? Uh, talk. There's, yeah. talk. There's scuttlebutt. There's talk. Scuttlebutt. There is, there is scuttlebutt. Jeez, that's, that's an issue that just not that I, you know, all I know about the restaurant business is what a tough <clears> business <throat> it is. That's yeah. all I know, but still yeah. puzzling to me that I think I've told you Rick, Rick's in Milton, which I don't go to often, but I told Rick, I tried to convince Rick, I'm telling you, if you ever go to Rick's Grill in Milton, yes. I said, Rick, you would, I'm telling you, Swanton's <laughs> your place. And he looked at me, hey, you're, you're crazy, Richard. I've been in this business too long. Don't even talk to me. But yeah. Yeah. anyway, so talking scuttlebutt, but nothing, well, nothing uh, more. Hopefully by this time next year, we'll, it will not be scuttlebutt. Yeah. So. And I didn't yeah. mean to just key on the downtown, but right. we're working well with the town, uh, Joel Clark and his, 
his, his constant jab of me about one Swanton. Uh, the, the, ta the town and the village are working very well together and the town, we're helping the town and the town is helping us. So uh, things are, are coming together uh, pretty smoothly, I think. And I wouldn't, even, I wouldn't even mention the M word. Why even bring, bring that no, up, right? No, uh, that's, this mm -hmm. is Joel's <laughs> sidetrack for that. Mm -hmm. And I guess it's worth noting, Joel was just appointed the chair of the select board. Oh, it, okay, yes. Dan, Dan had been the chair. And Dan was, and so, so Joel, Joel yeah, yeah, like about another veteran been, selectman there. Yeah, and then yeah. Yeah. Karen, Karen Drennan. Karen Drennan is uh, vice chair. Oh, is vice chair. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. So oh, the, the teen, <clears throat> teen center deserves it. We might have t touched that in passing, but again, the teen center issue, is that nailed down or in the process? Not well, nailed down? Well, we'd have to, um, it, I mean, the nego negotiations are still okay. in place as far as a, And again, this the is the old Swanton and Wayside Furniture right. is what's being looked at. In fact, I think right. they have a sign. When I walked on the rail trail the other day, it seems like I saw mm -hmm. a sign in the building. Wayside. Yeah. What's that? It's just wayside, not furniture. No, just, sorry, just, just the wayside. wayside. Just the wayside. Yeah. It seems like I saw a Swanton Teen Center sign. So that's... It would have to go up. For, uh, whatever happens, yeah. it's got to go before um, the public for a vote. At, okay. Yeah. And is that meeting. likely to happen at Marchtown meeting or not that uh, possibly? Well, well, possibly, I would say possibly. at this point. I think the things are still up. The yeah. Chippenelli's felt that it was, it was a time to... Uh, to take a look at who are we serving in Swanton yeah. and are we serving the, the population that uh, is, uh, you know, in need there. And uh, I think with the uh, Swanton rec coming up and having a conversation with mm -hmm. them, it was like an aha moment, it seemed like. Yeah. Uh, so it's going to be exciting, I think. And uh, you get these type of things, you know, when you talk about revitalization and the downtown and everything, I mean, people are starting to see that uh, this is a good place to live. Um, you know, when you talk about stigmas, I mean, uh, those type of things take a long time to uh, relinquish. Yeah. But I think we're on the we're on the right path for that. Speaking of stigmas, I know the the, the prison, the state prison work camp came up for a vote some years ago, and Swanton didn't want to move on that. I thought it might not have been a crazy idea, but kind of ironically, Swanton still gets tagged as being the home of the Northwest State Correctional Facility, whose official address, I guess, is a Swanton address, even though for the record it is in, Saint last Albans. time I checked, St. Albans Town, but yeah. what, can, yeah. what can you do? And so the, the issue before voters would be whether the town wants to, to, to buy... W whether to buy it or not. To buy to the spend whatever the amount turns out to be, uh, to spend that to purchase the building and also there's a, um, uh, a full-time um, program director for the rec department okay. on the table too. Okay. Down to a couple minutes. Anything anybody wants to quickly talk about that we haven't touched on? Reg, anything? I just um, want to thank you for what you do, Richard. Yeah. I mean, a lot of this uh, being able to come in, you know, and just have a conversation. It's like having a living room conversation with somebody, you know, and just the way you bring stuff out and give us the opportunities to come in here and, and do this kind of stuff. So I appreciate what it is that you do for us. Oh, well, thanks, Bridge. You're more than kind. And again, for the record, this, this is a guy who's doing all the groundwork, uh, getting everybody's schedule and stuff. But, but thanks. I appreciate that. Elizabeth, any quick thoughts as you look towards a new year coming up? There's just a you know a lot going on, and we hope to continue the momentum. And I'm happy to be at the table, in more ways than one. Yeah, interesting. Good. Neil, what, what do you think? Any uh, anything we haven't touched on that you want to uh, yeah, touch Merry on? Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Really? Happy holidays, however you want to say it. Yeah. Um, and again, and you had a again you had your uh, Christmas. <clears throat> event just this last yes. Saturday. Christmas in the Park. Yes. Christmas in the Park and that yeah. went pretty well. Thank the uh, Chamber for that. Uh, Adam Paxman, uh, Suzanne Washburn and mm -hmm. uh, uh, Mark, Rushlow. The, Mark Rushlow. Mark Rushlow. Mark Rushlow and yeah. he, he has done the, the decorations in the park hmm. this year uh, but uh, looks looks nice and and we thank them for putting on the event and uh, and the library is pretty active. They're, they're having some art shows in there now and uh hmm. just thanks everybody for for keeping the uh the energy up so very good david you want the last word sure uh, i'd like to praise the town's highway crews because they do an outstanding job hmm. maintaining our roads in both the, um, the summertime and now in the winter and uh in making sure that they have a, a schedule of uh repaving uh certain roads every year to keep them in good shape 
And the one in particular, the uh, extension of Robin Hood uh, Drive, mm -hmm. uh, is very popular. It was uh, paved, and now I see quite a few, a lot of people, uh, drivers, uh, using that little yeah. shortcut. Very good. On that note, we're going to say, say goodbye. Thanks to David Jeskavich, the Swanton Town Administrator, Neil Spear, the Swanton Village President, Reg Bellava, the Swanton Village Manager, Elizabeth Nance, Swanton's Economic, Deve Economic Development Coordinator. Thanks for the time. I know how busy everybody is. Uh, good luck to Swanton. Hope you have a very successful year coming up. And again, thanks to our guests. Thanks to my man, Zach, for doing all the hard work. And again, happy holidays, everyone. Merry Christmas. Happy, healthy new year. Thanks for watching us here on on Northwest Access TV. I'm Richard Carberthwaite. We'll see you down the road.